We want to create a safe environment where it's an each one teach one kind of space and we all contribute to each other in some kind of way. I would really love to go to a market and see not only indigenous foods in their natural state, but products made by indigenous people of our indigenous foods that are taking the place of chemicals. We're just really hoping to inspire people to help us or join us or learn from us. Because of the Stream 1 and Stream 2 funding for the Indigenous Food Sovereignty Program, we've been able to begin our foundation, literally our foundation. Our property here is about 10 acres of untouched field for the last 15 years. And so it's a lot of work to put in a food forest. If you want to start organizing people and thinking about food sovereignty, one of the best things to do is to start planting the plants yourself. Well, I think having the barn built right away immediately was an indicator to everybody that there's something going on here. With creating the food forest, I've been researching and creating how to make an ethnobotany guide book so that I can bring people here and teach them about the plants in the language with our cultural teachings. Like coronation grapes, table grapes. There are things here that are starting to grow that as a family, we've been growing for a long time and not really knowing what to do with them because again, they're not one of the, the usual um, foods that you can find in the market. And the abundance that will come out of this property later could feed the community and it will really help increase the resilience in a time where things are changing so fast. Specifically for this project, we really want to be teaching people how to be seal again and know how to live off the land or live with the land with whatever they have. To be working with the land is to be healthy. If we were all able to give that much attention just to plants, then imagine how we'd be able to take care of ourselves.